So I did this this demo at HOW, which is a, in Beverly Hills, a week ago. That was last Wednesday. And it's the first time I've done it in a long time, so I figured, what the heck, I'll do it tonight, too, and be done with my requirements for the year. Anyway, he got advertised as a birdhouse, and yes, this can be a birdhouse. There's a birdhouse. I'm going to pass this around because the bird's nest is still in it. And my wrens are complaining that I took it down. They've been flying up trying to get into my into my other pile. This thing's about 10 years old. And Jason, I showed Jason how to do it a number four, five, six years ago. And he's turned a bunch of them. And I've got a half a dozen around around the property. And the birds like So what I'm going to show you will make that. It will also make a Christmas ornament. I'll pass this around. This is really simple. If you got some of those string lights that have a little LED light on the end of them that flashes, you stick the little light in there and you put a little hot glue on it, put a glue on it, hang it on the tree, and you can have a whole we bunch of it. Under the... Yeah. It's got a hole in the bottom where you stick the light. These holes, these three holes are drilled all the way through. All you have to do is put an eye hook on it, and you'll see the light through the three holes. So this technique can be used for that. What I'm specifically going to turn for you tonight is a is a hobbit house with a little fireplace in it. Now you can call it a hobbit house, or you can call it a gnome home, or you know if you're into gnomes, you want to make little gnomes, you can make a bunch of those. Uh, Christmas is coming up, you can call it elf dwelling. You can call it anything you want, okay? So these are all made the same way. I'll pass this one around. You can see it with a little light in it. And by the way, I, I scrapped the ground and found some of these lights, so if some of you want to try it, they cost me almost a buck a piece. If you want one, throw a dollar in the bag and take one, you just sell them. So, or you can, you can buy them from Amazon if you want them 50 cents a piece. I don't know the quality. But I think I saw them on Amazon for like 14 or 15 dollars for 24 of them. But you know, if you turn 24 of these things, you're going to kind of be worn out. You probably want to turn more. Okay. So I got some other pieces of all the ash around as we get along. You want to start off with a piece of branch wood, and we had two hurricanes, folks. Lots of branch wood. <laughs> My rule of thumb for turning these is the length should be about two and a half times the diameter. So this is close to three inches in diameter, and it's about seven and a half inches long or so. So the first thing I want to determine before I get started is I want to see which end, whereas Harold's piece, he wanted to have the weirdest end on the bottom. I want to have the non-weirdest end on the bottom. So I'm looking to see which end is actually going to be the roundest, because that's going to be my top. Excuse me, that's going to be my bottom. I'll get it right now. So I'm going to find a piece, and actually both both these ends are pretty good. I'm going to make this end my top, okay? And I'm going to put my top, the top of the piece about in the center. So I'm going to find the center here, and I'm going to mark it like that. Just be some glasses up here. And some somewhere. Uh oh. All right. Now I can see. This is going to be the top. I'm going to put a tenon on this end. So what I want to do is I'm going to start off with it on the tailstock end, and I'm going to bring it up like this. But what I want to accomplish here is I'm going to offset it like Harold did his little pieces. We're going to offset this end of it. So I'm going to look at it, and when I turn it. I basically want it, depending on how big a piece you're using, I want to offset one side to the other side, probably about three eighths of a quarter to three eighths of an inch. So here's what I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring my uh, tool rest up, and I'm going to look. There's my high point right there. Get this a higher. There's my high point right there, and that's close right there. Not too bad. I'll take that. Now I want to look at one other thing. I want to look and see. So there, here's my here's my high point right here. Okay. So that's where when I turn the blade on, 
That's where I'm going to start cutting it first. Okay. So that's where my door is going to be, or my biggest oak. So 90 degrees to that, or close to 90 degrees, are going to be my two windows. I'd like for them to kind of be symmetrical too. So I'm kind of look here and see how much I'm off there and how much I'm off here. It's off a little bit, but it's close enough. Okay. So now I'm out. First thing I'm going to do is square up this end and put me a tenon on it. Check my speed on the legs. I haven't done that yet. I had to turn it on to see if it works. So hopefully it works. Yeah, we're on high speed. I'll just go slow. Turn it on so we get here. All right. So far we have something that's working. I'm going to take a bowl gouge. I'm going to square this end of it off and then I'll talk about tenon real quick. I have three steps to making a tenon. My first step, which is not here, my first step is I want to use the biggest set of jaws that will fit the piece that I'm going to turn. In this case, I'm going to use a big mark choke with 50 millimeter jaws on it, or basically about two inches. Since this piece is close to three inches, it should fit fine. So that's step one. Step two is I want to make a tenon that is the same size that fits my chug. Now, I normally have a tool here, and guess what? It's got an iron on it, and it's seen on the side of my leg. So that's not going to do me any good, is it? So I'm going to guess to this here real quick, about right to uh, here. I'm going to get from somewhere about right there. Normally, I would measure that, because I want to end up, I want it slightly bigger than these jaws. In the end, what I would like to have happen is I would like these jaws to be open somewhere between a quarter and an eighth of an inch when they when they secure this tenon. That's going to give me the most crimping power around here. So step number two is to make your tenon the correct size. So now we got to step one and step two. Step three is get the right shape. These jaws are dovetail in shape, so I don't want this tenon square. I want it to have the same angle. There's where this tool right here comes in. Okay, you'll see, you'll see this is not 90 degrees here, okay? It is the same angle as this right here on this dovetail. So when I turn this on, that should fit my shot. One more thing I do real quick is I will leave the bottom of this so it doesn't push the piece out of the jaws, which is just take the thing around and just take it over and get that out of the bottom. Done. If I did it right, it should fit. And if I did it wrong, we're going to pretend it fits. Unless he made it too small. I made sure to just leave it. I made it too big. Yes, I have to get into it. Yeah, that's what I know. I know everything I know from experience. Wisdom comes from experience, experience comes from bad decisions. 
show? Pretty good guess. Uh, quarter, two minutes, five minutes. Whenever you have the opportunity to secure the piece of the tail off, always do that. That's the most secure piece you have is a piece that's between centers. I'm not familiar with this lathe that much because we don't, I want to turn it on once a year. But on my lathe at home, I always adjust this so that the handle's on that side. Because if I adjust it with the handle over here, it's old enough that as it vibrates, it loosens up. If I put it on that side, it doesn't do it. So it's just a hair. All right. So this is going to be our top. So basically, we're going to end up with it looking like that. So what I need to do now is I need to establish three points. I need to establish this point. I need to establish this point, and I need to establish this point. The three points are going to get me uh, get me started, and you can you can get fancy and you can better your own and use the one foot rule and do this, you know, or you can use your Fibonacci dividers, which I'm sure Jason's going to run out and do. Uh, no, I just not bought it for this, but I'm going to have it Okay. Make sure that you. Uh, each time you move your tool rest on this, you turn it because it's off center. And if you don't, it's going to surprise you. When I establish this point, I don't want to try and start off establishing it because what's going to happen is if I want to say the bark is going to bark off. So I'm going to start back here and work up to it. And I'm going to start here and work up to that in the same way on all three of them. I should have just waited this in by the point of the story, but I think I'll open up here to do that. So now I can see where my main body is going to be and my roof is going to be. I'm going to go ahead and find this one down a little bit. I want to lose the bark on at least one spot because that's going to be the spot that's going to have the most overhang for the roof and that's where I'm going to put my door. So now if I look at it, I've got bark here and I've got bark here. They're about 90 degrees out. I'm going to make my door right here. And the size of the door you're going to make depends on the size of the piece you're going to use. So, I have this mark for a reason. That's going to be our door right there. I'm going to drill that. And I'm going to drill it almost to center because when I go to the hollow, that's going to help me because it's going to be able to play for all these shavings to come out so I don't have to clean them out as much. I ball the center right here. I'm going to start off nice and easy. There you go. I'm going to drop two sizes in real bit on my uh, windows. 
And what I want to do here is I want to come 90 degrees off of this, but I also want to have my window top about the same height as the door. So if I look at it right here, about right here, it looks like a good floor. None of this is rocket science, folks. Why are you using a phosphor bit? I'm sorry? Why aren't you using a, a regular bit? Why are you using a phosphor? Because it's what I have. Okay. <laughs> I, I think a regular bit would be fine. And since I'm using all the precise measurements they're trying to. So we can make this demo more entertaining. <laughs> well, you know, I, I dribble now because they always do this. And when I finish turning it, I can turn that off. All right, so now I have my three goals. Remember. Measure with micrometer, mark it with chalk, cut it with an axe. <laughs> <laughs> I've been married to her for almost 35 years. <laughs> it's with the cooking. Thank you. At least we know that. I'm going to stop and now I'm going to put some holes in it. Okay? When I drill these holes, <laughs> because now is a good time to do it. I'm going to drill them in two stages. That's what I'm doing. The first, the first hole I'm going to put in there is going to be for this light. And that takes a one and a half inch drill bit. And maybe it won't get stuck. And maybe it will. You always got to remember when you do a demonstration, anything. But so far, nobody's ever been seriously injured in any of my demos, so well, I'm not seriously injured. I'm a little on drilling the part of her here. There's all this stuff coming out there. I'm good to go. Now, I can't quite get as far as I want to get. I want to actually drill past this line here. Because this is going to end up solid bark all the way around here. And if I don't get past that, when this piece dries, it's going to crack. It's going to move. So what I generally do is I cheat. I don't want to put an extender in it. So I just stick the drill bit in a little bit. And if I lose it up in there, then I just take an ax, cut the piece off wood off. I think it's on that. Now I'm right there. Okay. Right there. So I've gotten up in there far enough where that pulse not going to crack. I'm going to do one other thing. Lay back I'm going to drill on up into the roof with a different size bit to release some of that stress so when it starts to dry, the roof doesn't crack. And for that, I'm going to use a one inch bit that has, already has an M2 paper on it. And I have a lot of bitter, and I'll assume that it's marked in about where it's from. I've never shaped the roof and gone through, but one of those I passed around, I noticed after I got it off the clay and was looking at it, those were most attractive pieces. I could see the light through it, so we got some fan up here when I turned the outside. So we'll see. 
Maybe do a little flip on these bits like this. We have a big bit that's expensive. I sold them wax paper for two things. Uh, number one is it's normally hot. I'm going to put a wax paper on it. put some little wax on it, which duplicates a little. And number two is if I'm drilling somewhere in a demo, I drop these when it starts squeezing, I grab these wax paper, put it in there, lubricate a little bit, stop the squeeze. Everybody's not holding their ears and crying. All right. Later, we're going to come back and we're going to hollow this out that we didn't that we didn't know to do. I'm going to put a cone on the end of this. Put it back between the centers. And I'm going to start shaping this outside. The new gals. This is going to give me a little bit clear cut in the bulb here. I'm going to make them cut as straight as I can make them here. Remember, when you're using gouges, this. You can see it on the overhead. Are you on the overhead? Yeah, so. This does not give you a straight cut. That will not give you a straight cut into that. A straight cut is on the belt. If I want a straight cut in here, my handle is way over here on this side, so that this bevel is lined up to the center. That's going to give me a straight cut into there. Could you show that again without your head in the way? Okay. That's going to give me a straight cut, not this. This one give you that way. How many people in here, to be honest, practice speeds and codes? That's the beat. That's all I'm doing is beat. And when I get up here at the roof, all I want to do is partial code. Are you gonna give it to your neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> well, my bit tore it out here, but then and that's pretty good. When you when you're turning it, you want to turn this B here, this round body, where You've only got a little bit of barge left back here. If you turn it like this, where you've got a lot of bark, you can end up with a thick wall. Because this right here is going to be the thinnest part of your vessel when you finish. Because remember, we all said it. So, where it is, if you can see here, you can see that that's probably almost a half inch thick here. I can tell you here that it's less than a quarter inch right there. So you don't want to go through. And when I was making burn now, so I was trying to make it really thin, and I actually went through. But you know, I've got enough birds who really didn't care. <laughs> they look at it. I'm going to go ahead and shake this down a little bit here on the top.
You know, it's on that last cut hole was doing it, was finding my bevel, pivoting right off there, and just swinging that two little handle around. And that was giving me this, this arc here. I'm going to hobble this just a little bit. Because I want to do that before I get the top in, where it starts to, starts to bite a little And hopefully this thing is still set up. That's how I want it. Trent Bosch Holland system. Uh, I have four Holland systems, and 90% of the time, this is what I use. And the reason it's the one I use is because I go from a tool rest to a Holland system just that fast. And I have the use of Paul's Cobra, and it takes about and have probably five minutes to set it down if it doesn't pinch you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anybody that's used one knows they're they tend all right. All right. All right. You gotta remember when you're hauling things, when you put these relief holes in here, when this bit hits those holes, it's gonna cut a lot faster. So it's really easy to over over hollow it here and under hollow it on the two ends. You gotta be careful. And use nice even strokes when you come off through here. Don't let it, don't let it too round like that right there. Good lesson. Give me one second. If I didn't mess it up, it wouldn't be a learning experience. You never had a you never had a mistake when you were demoing, have you? I said you never had no, anything get knocked loose while you were demoing, have you? <laughs> what happened with me? I didn't have a good bite and the tool called in the in the tunnel throughout my head. And Paul's back to saying he doesn't want to face him at all. Should be getting this kind of chatter. That sure would be easier with a visualizer. <laughs> <laughs> 
Benjamin is Benny. <laughs> How many visualizers do you have at your, your shop? One. Okay. I bring mine over just to compare. That's just slightly. <laughs> there's one there. Or as you can see, it's just slightly. Oh, it's slightly over a quarter inch. Hey, worst we can do is blow it up. And I've never done that before, so it would be exciting. And while I'm hauling this, you probably can't tell this unless they've gone to the end stop. But I haven't hauled from here to here on the inside where I drilled it. That's still an inch and a half because that's where I'm going to put that little light, that little T, T light. And if I haul that part of it, then uh, the light's not going to fit. I'm going to call it good. Who makes that hauling system? This is Trent Bosch. He makes two of them. He makes uh, this, uh, this is a five eighths. It's a smaller of the two he makes. And he makes a three quarter. So I don't know. Reed bought one recently. Reed, how much, how much was it? $1,800. What did you buy? All of You bought everything. I'm sorry. <laughs> Before, forget I asked Rita. Trent obviously saw Rita coming. I said he buy everything. I paid, and I've had this for probably eight or ten years, and I think it was uh, three hundred dollars for the stabilizer, and then each each shaft here on here is like sixty five dollars. I think it's about four hundred for stabilizer. About four hundred fifty dollars for three and that. About. And then when and then when you go to the visualizer that. that John has, which I do not have. I have a homemade one. And my homemade one cost me $100 because that's what the monitor cost me. And the little cameras, the CCTV camera that I put on, you'd have to see it. So it's pretty simple. He also just started making one inch bars that go in the three inch, yeah. uh, three quarter. I will say, he does make, yeah. unless you go into deep hollow, unless you want to hollow something Sold deeper than, what, what can you go? 12, 14 inches with three quarter uh, inches. Is well, when I was, what I'm yeah, asking I mean, is, I mean, it's applied the, the number of inches by 15, and that's kind of your depth. So if it, so an inch will go 15 inches, three quarters will I've, go. I've been, I've I've been, been over 12 with my three quarter. It depends on if the you, you know, if you put a stabilizer on or you don't move around, you can get it to 30. Okay. So the body of this thing, this part is done. All I need to do is finish my roof out. Okay. And uh, that's pretty easy to do. <laughs> if, if I don't go through it. The three quarter is 425, and the 5 8 is 325. Okay. That's just the same line. That's just the same line. Visualizer, everything. Well, if you do everything, including the visualizer, yeah. Enter keys into a Jacksonville fair. And wouldn't hold it off. Exactly. Yeah. Or if you use recycled
If I did that, we wouldn't have an excuse to mess with them. <laughs>
Sorry. Did y'all see the difference in the cut? The one I just called up, did you see how I wasn't see see the sharp and how easy it's cutting down? That's the reason we compare our tools. Then when you get to this point, uh, read what you do with those little lights. Tell me one of those little lights I put over there. Put your little light in here because what's going to happen is when this drives, it's going to shrink. What I would suggest is you push it up in there and you put a little washer or something on it. You set it on the flat surface for a day. And when it dries, the little light will be in there. So there you go. Yeah. And, you know, Christmas ornament, oven house, bird house, whatever you want to make, they're all made the same way. Anybody here? Bill? Oh, about how much did you offset the base when you started? Uh, on this particular side, I was looking at it, and I, and I wanted the difference when I had the, the two wrists up there. I wanted it somewhere between a quarter and a three eighths. But in other words, if it touched on one side, I wanted about three eighths of an inch on the other side. Okay, it, it also depends on how round the piece is. If it's a limb, piece of limb wood, sometimes they're weird shape. You know, that may be controlled. If it's kind of a lot of limb wood, it's a kind of teardrop shape. And when it does, I try and put the front door on the, on the sharper radius part, you know what I'm saying, so it's round here, and it comes down like that, I'm trying to put, put the door over here. It makes it easier to offset it that way. So when I try to get it, when I offset it, the two sides are about the same, kind of little bit up. And if you turn really green wood like that, when you drill those holes, that's what's gonna happen, you're gonna get it tear out. So if it's a little bit drier, I just got that piece Today, so I should have used a piece I had been drying for. Other questions? Don? When you're doing your birdhouse, do you just do your normal plug bottom? No. Uh, if you look at that birdhouse, what I do is I put hardware cloth in the bottom and I save it hardware cloth. A little quarter inch, half inch. What I put wire in the bottom. Oh, okay. Wire in the bottom. And, and the birds just build over because what you want to do is every year. You want to pull a wire off, dump the bird house, stuff out because it. it's got all the bird shell and bird poop and everything else in it. And get them on a fresh place and build a nest in the front. Okay. Except, and also, if you want to do bird houses, go to the Audubon Society website and they'll tell you what size hole and what size inside you want to do particular birds. So if you want to do like a uh, or something, they'll tell you exactly how you need to turn it for size. Uh, I have a bunch of wrens around the house, and they're always trying to build nests where I don't want to build nests. So I make them for wrens, so hopefully they'll stay out of wood pile. Uh, Mike? You drilled the windows and the door first for the hole. Yeah. Why not hollow and then drill those holes? Because if I hollowed it and then I drill the holes, I, I have two problems. Uh, the first problem is I've got to clean all that stuff out of the inside. If I drill the holes first, it's got a place to sling now. And the second problem is if I drill the hole, the doors last, 
when I go through, it's going to tear the wood on the inside. So I'm trying to drill the holes where I'm going to turn a little bit more on the outside to where it's going to tear the grain. And I didn't on that piece because it's a little too gray. Okay. If you look at some of these others, like this one, I've got three really clean holes in this one. But it had been drying, you know, for a week or so. Or you cut it in short pieces. Now, a week drying makes a lot of difference in how wet the wood is. So I got cleaner holes here, and I got a clean, clean uh, cut on the inside. Whereas if I drilled it second after I hollowed it, I had to fish all that stuff out of the hollow, and then I would have torn it as it went through. Because it's not going through a flat surface, it's going through a curved surface, so part of the drill bit's going to come through before the other part, so it's going to tear the wires. Non-supported grain nice. into that. I'm sorry? Non-supported yeah. grain into Non-supported grain, yes. And it makes a really nice um, uh, cloud around you as you're spinning. Yeah, 30, 30 40 degrees. <laughs> That's not counted two before that. <laughs> uh, other questions? That was a really good question, Mike. Are we done? All right. Uh, we have our three volunteers for next month's uh, Christmas tree ornaments. Uh, we have a, a. If you want to volunteer, look. If you don't want to be, if you don't want to volunteer for the art festival, the art fair. But you're there and you want to come down and spend some time and talk to us and hang out in the booth and talk to other people, yeah. You know, we don't have to have you on the list for you to show up. Everybody's welcome. So I'm going to set you to my house at 9 o'clock. If you don't know where I live, Rito will give you an address. Fine. Oh, Rito will send you an email. I stand correct. With with map over there. So, anything else? I never got some. Stay and help clean up if you would. Thank you very much. Everybody be careful for home. Hopefully we don't have any more hurt or damage.